Hello and welcome back to FreePhotoshop.com and video number 20 in this epic series all about the levels command. In the previous video we explored the statistical world of the histogram palette and in this tutorial we're going to turn our attention to the RGB histogram as we see how it assembles data for us to view on screen. The RGB histogram by the way is the one that we use inside the levels dialog box. Now I've already got what looks like a blank image on screen but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to open up the layers palette by clicking on the layers icon inside the cluster and then I'm going to switch off the visibility of the top layer so we can see the text beneath it and here's a brief guide to the RGB histogram. So firstly each pixel is calculated on a channel by channel basis and if we take a quick look at the channels palette over here you'll see that Photoshop always works with the free channels independently. Photoshop then composites those channels into a kind of virtual channel so it can display the way we'd like to see it on screen. So it's important to know that the composite view, or the composite histogram in this case, is always formed last. It's always formed from those three individual channel histograms. Okay, so we understand that. But how are the channel histograms formed in the first place? How do we get red, green and blue histograms? Well, let's follow the text. A channel histogram is formed by counting the number of pixels in each channel that fall into the available luminance levels. And that's usually, or always in the case of an 8-bit per channel RGB image, going to be between 0 and 255. So a total of 256 possible brightness values. Next, the composite RGB histogram is created from adding together the red, green and blue histograms and the important word there, the one we're going to come back to in a second or two, is the word adding. Before I give you a demonstration on screen of what's happening with these histograms, let's take a look at some basic pros and cons of the RGB histogram. So the advantage is, or one of the advantages I should say, there are plenty of them, but one of them is that it illustrates clipped colour channels, which is actually a really good thing because it brings them to our immediate attention and we can either choose to ignore it or do something about it. A disadvantage is that the calculation doesn't provide accurate luminance information. And you'll see why that's important and how we get round the problem in the next video. For now I'm going to switch to the next image entitled Clipped Colours and Beautiful Luminance which is actually an image that is as simple as it looks to be honest right here on screen. It is just one big dollop of blue pixels. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag out that histogram just like we did in the previous video. I'm also going to switch to the All Channels view whilst I'm here and then I'll drag the colour palette onto the left side of the screen here and then switch my cursor over to the eyedropper tool like so. Okay, I think we're set to go. Next, if we check out the stats over here, you'll see that we have a total of 10,000 pixels inside this image. And we can agree with Photoshop because if you check out the document dimensions down here, you'll see that we're working with a 100 by 100 pixel image. And of course, 100 multiplied by 100 is 10,000. I'm also going to sample this blue with the eyedropper here to confirm we're working with 10,000 pure blue pixels. So we know that every pixel inside the image will have a brightness value in the blue channel of 255 and brightness values in the red and green channels of 0. And of course that's reflected in the colour palette here. Now let's check out the weird looking histogram that this image produces and see how the values in the colour palette tie up with the individual channel histograms over here. So first of all, every pixel we have in the image is reading a red value of 0. So to say that there's no red needed to make this colour. So therefore if we check out the histogram for the red channel, we'll see that it illustrates that all pixels are in the far left column, which is of course a brightness level of 0. Exactly the same for the greens. Once again, there's absolutely no green in this image, and that's reflected in the histogram for the green channel. Finally, we know from the colour palette that the blue pixels have a brightness level of 255, and once again, that's reflected in the histogram for the blue channel. So we can see those blue pixels over here under the appropriate brightness level. Now, I'd say that's pretty straightforward stuff going on to create these three individual histograms. 
The bit that we perhaps need to understand is how these free channel histograms form to make the composite view that we see when we first enter the levels dialog box. Well it turns out the calculation is simpler than you'd think. All Photoshop does is adds together the free channel histograms to form the composite view. So let's come up to the composite view here and I want you to keep an eye on the pixel count as I select the 255th brightness level and you'll see that Photoshop counts 10,000 pixels in our image which is great. If I do the same to the opposite end you'll see that we now get the sum of the red and green channels which counts out at 20,000 pixels which have a brightness level of 0. That's also great because that gives us a total count of 30,000 and as long as we remember that each pixel is evaluated three times once each for red, green and blue then things will make complete sense. Okay now we're all on the same wavelength so I'm going to switch to the next image entitled the clipped curtain and I'm going to go ahead and switch the histogram back to the expanded view. Now keep in mind everything that we already know so what is the histogram telling us here? Well I'd say that it's telling me that we've got a fairly high key image going on here and that would be fairly accurate. The other thing it would tell me is that we've got a load of clipped highlights as well and that is the RGB composite histogram telling lies. I can guarantee you that there's not a single white pixel anywhere inside this image. We do have clipping inside the three individual channels but we never have more than two channels clipped in the same pixel. So we may have clipping going on inside the red and green channels in order to produce this bright yellow for example and we may have clipping inside the red and blue channels over here on the right hand side of the image to produce this bright magenta colour but the three channels never clip together in the same pixel and therefore we never end up getting a completely white pixel anywhere inside this image. So what's important to remember there is that whilst the RGB histogram is warning us of clipping inside the colour channels it's not able to tell us that the clipping never occurs in the same places. In fact if we expand the histogram to the all channels view we can see now that all of these histograms are really leading us to believe that there's a huge amount of blown highlights in this image when in fact we have absolutely no blown highlights at all. Ok well hopefully now you have a better understanding of how the RGB histogram is formed and you'll also appreciate where some of its strengths and weaknesses are. In the next video we're going to look at the luminance histogram and explore some of the pros and cons of using that. For now thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video.